everything sort of just dissolved, just vanished. There was no way that I could have continued on because radio was killed by the business. My CBS killed its own child. NBC killed its own child. They all said, we're not going to have radio drama anymore because it is not paying off. In a very conscious way, all radio shows were canceled. They went or, to music, they went to talk shows, or whatever it was, yeah. Talk shows? A pox on those. One interesting sidelight that Mr. Daner mentioned to me off the air was that he was at KMPC with the man who starred in Gunsmoke, William Conrad. They both worked oh, yeah. at KMPC back, back in the 40s. Back in 1942, 43. Wow. Bill was, uh, uh, he read poetry. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine that, oh, though, with yeah. that voice, that oh, he would yes, be fantastic. Yeah. I bet he would have been. I, yeah. bet he, I bet he was. Another great radio voice. Oh, we were, oh, geez, we were so innocent. We thought we were so great. As escape and shows like it were canceled, there were fewer opportunities for radio's West Coast actors on network sustained programs. This episode, An Ordinary Man, was written by Kathleen Height. It starred John Daner and Virginia Gregg. Tony Barrett, Edgar Barrier, and Harry Bartell supported. It aired on June 3, 1954. Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, transcribed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are running through the alleys of a Mediterranean village, the blackness of the Italian night confusing you, while somewhere in the dark behind you, coming closer as they search for you, are a man and a beautiful woman who mean to take your life. Listen now as Escape brings you Kathleen Height's story, An Ordinary Man. I don't know yet why I said it. But later, as I stood at the deck rail and felt the light chill of the Mediterranean night, I decided it was a good thing. I was 40 years old. In all my 40 years, people had never looked at me the way they had in the salon a few minutes earlier. 40 years. That's a long time to go unnoticed. A long time to be just an ordinary man. I had never known a beautiful woman, and Maria Novella was beautiful. A man doesn't tell such a woman that he's an assistant county assessor or that this Mediterranean cruise took his life savings. It was late. I was alone on deck. And for the first time in my life, I felt that I could be anything I wanted to be. Ah, boy, oh boy. Hello. So this is where you came to hide, Senor Hanson. Oh, Miss Novella. No, I just thought it was stuffy in the dining room. Came out on deck to take the air. You are very gallant, Senor. I too found Senorita Thurston's little game very trying. Oh? Well, it, it wasn't the game so much. As a matter of fact, I get sort of a kick out of guessing who people are or what they do and then... Finding out whether I'm right or wrong. People can be very deceptive. (laughs) You must have discovered that. So often, they're not what they seem. Is that not so? Oh, I don't know. I don't get fooled very often. If you're a good judge of character, and uh, I fancy that I am. Oh, I'm sure that you are. Well, (laughs) thanks very much. Not at all. It is a quality I admire. 
I am so often wrong about people. I was completely wrong about you. <laughs> yes, I guess I had you fooled all right. Your work must be fascinating. Oh, it's, it's a job. But importing rare gems, it has the sound of many things. Romance, in its true sense. And history, and I should think, danger. Oh, I suppose, but as I say, it, it's a job. Even scouting around the world in search of perfect stones, well, it all becomes routine after a while. I think you are modest, Senor Hensel. I think you know a very great deal that you do not say. <laughs> and I think I will go right on regarding your life as romantic and dangerous. Well, if it makes you happy... It does. <laughs> you see, senor? You prove my point. Oh, how is that? That people are so often not what they seem. Here you are, an importer of rare gems, and you have the appearance of just an ordinary man. <laughs> well, it's getting chilly. I'm afraid I must go in now. Oh, so soon? I mean... Well, if you're chilly, I could uh, lend you my coat. It is also quite late. Oh. Well, then, may I see you to your cabin? How very nice. We seem to be very much alone. Yes. Not a very lively group aboard, I'd say. And I had thought not a very interesting group until tonight. Oh. <laughs> yes, I guess you're right. Here we are. Here? Well, we're practically neighbors. I'm just a few doors down on the other side. I know. Oh? Oh, you do? Do you mind that I noticed you? No, then. I'll bet you know I don't mind the least bit. I hope not. Sometimes, Senor Hansel, a woman traveling alone, she's afraid just... Of being alone, she's afraid. Why, now, there's nothing to be afraid of. A small cruise boat like this, not very many people. Oh, I should not trouble you. I talk too much. Oh, you just go right ahead. Why, you're trembling, Miss Novella. I, I'm a foolish woman. I will say good night now, senor. And thank you for being so kind. Are you sure you're all right? Now, if you'd like me to stay with you a while, no, I'd be... No, no, please, you must go. And forget what I have said. Oh, oh. oh. I'm sorry, signorina. It's only Pietro, Mr. Bella. I see. I, uh, I do not mean to frighten the signorina. What were you doing in my cabin? I bring the signorina fresh linens. Eh? <laughs> it's enough crime, fresh linens. So late at night, you bring me the linens? Yes, it is late, Pietro. Uh, Pietro has much work in so many cabins. The signorina was not in... <laughs> I did not think that she would mind. Go now, Pietro. This must not happen again. As you wish. <laughs> Pietro would never frighten the signorina. Are you afraid of him, really? I do not know. I'm afraid of many things. Because if you're afraid of Pietro, it's a simple matter to tell the captain, you know. I would not want that. Look, uh, if it'd make you feel better, I'd be glad to come into your cabin with you. Oh, uh, just to look around. Be sure that everything is all right. No. Oh, thank you, but no. You've talked too much. You will please go now, too. I... I'd like to help you, Miss Novella. Not now. We will meet tomorrow. Perhaps then you can help me. My mind was full of Maria Novella, and I didn't sleep very well that night. A beautiful woman was afraid, and she had brought her fears to me. Or rather, she brought them to the man she thought I was. A man whose business was danger and romance, a dealer in rare gems. I knew that night that I would never tell her the truth, that I must somehow come to be this man she thought I was. 
Your move, Hensel. Huh? Oh, yeah, yes, it is. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Brilliant. My mind hasn't been on my checkers all afternoon. You would think we were playing chess for great stakes the way you study your moves. I'm not even thinking about them, Mr. Brilliant. I'll concede the game to you. And I will accept, if only because it will be the first game I have won from you in three days. <laughs> you sure you don't mind? Oh, not at all, my friend. Tell me, have you business in Trapani? Hmm? I asked if you had business in Trapani. We dock in Sicily tonight, you know. No, no, uh, no, this is just a pleasure trip. Oh, that is good. Then you will be able to spend some time with me. Yes, I'd like that. I didn't realize that Trapani was your home. It isn't, but I have many friends there. A particular friend occupies one of the fine old Baroque palaces. He has an exceptional collection of jewels. I think so. The man with your knowledge of gems... But you are not listening, are you, Hensel? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, I was looking for someone. Really? Uh, I guess it's obvious, uh, but I haven't seen her all day. Do I know her? Oh, Miss Novella? I, I don't place the name, should I? Oh, yes, uh, last night in the salon. Remember when Miss Thurston organized her Guess Who game? Miss Novella was the beautiful dark woman in, in green. Oh, yes, I do remember her now. Very lovely. But I don't believe I've seen her today, either. And I, I'm sort of concerned about her. Wrapped at her cabin a time or two. She didn't answer. I I think I'll check again. I believe I would, if you are worried about her. Yes, I, I think I'd better. Excuse me. Oh, and thanks for the game, Mr. Brilliant. I'll see you when we dock, Hensel. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Oh, my, my goodness. Oh, sorry, oh. Mr. Hensel. Didn't see you. Are you hurt? No, 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 Miss Thurston. I'm... I'm I blew my whistle, but I guess you didn't hear it in time. Well, I, I guess not. <laughs> Doing wind sprints around the deck, getting my land legs in shape. Oh? Start my gym classes every day with wind sprints. Well, don't let me keep you. And remember, we're all playing indications tonight in the salon before we dock. Oh. Oh, oh, uh, hello, Signor Hansa. You were putting fresh linens in my cabin, Pietro? <laughs> fresh water, Signor. They keep you pretty busy with linens and water, don't they? <laughs> Pietro has much work. Eh? <laughs> so many cabins. Eh? I hope I find everything in its place, Pietro. I hope so too, Signor. It's Mr. Hensel. I was wondering if, if... Oh, hello there. Please come in, Senor Hensel. Well, if you're sure you don't mind. I, well, if, frankly, I've been worried about you, Miss Novella. I did not sleep well last night. Toward morning, I took a sedative. I wakened only a short time ago. I was going to send for you. I, is something wrong? I told you I might need your help. This is why I'm frightened, Signor. Oh, my. What a beautiful brooch. The last of my family's treasures, Signor. Oh. How old it is, I do not know. My grandmother left it to me. I've just come from her funeral in Lisbon. Uh, you say this is why you're frightened? I am a woman alone. Someone may know I have a brooch of great value. Pietro? Perhaps Pietro. I do not know. Miss Novella, why don't you go to the captain? I'm sure he could offer protection until you're ashore. No. I will not call attention to myself by going to the captain. If you will not help me, then... No, but how can I be of help to you? Well, you are used to these things, senor. You often carry gems, do you not? Oh, no. Uh, oh, well, of course, uh, yes, but I, I don't see... I know what... I can trust you. Take it, please. Uh, take it? Keep it for me. Only until we dock a Traponi. 
I will feel so much better, so much safer, senor. Y- yes, but if something should happen Please, now... it will be safe with you. I do not mean to impose, but who else can I turn to? If I cannot trust you... You can trust me, Miss Novella. I'll keep it for you. Escape would be canceled on September 25th. Greg Bartell and Daner would continue to work together on shows like Yours Truly Johnny Dollar, Gunsmoke, Frontier Gentleman, and Have Gun Will Travel. I gotta get even with John Daner. We were doing a romance, just two of us. That's the name of a show. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I don't know. Anyway, the very last speech of the show was mine, and it was long. It was about a half a page. And I believe that the very last sentence was, yes, Hans, or whoever, I really do love you. Well, usually you look up and you act to the actors, but this was a long, involved thing. So I read it down to that last line, which I had memorized, And I looked up, and John Daner is standing across the microphone from me with his eyes crossed. I'm sure everybody listening thought that was a dramatic pause I was taking. (laughs) I'll get even with him someday. I haven't managed to do it yet. For more info on John Daner's career, Tune into Breaking Walls, episode 101.